Welcome to another Lumion live stream tutorial, guys. This is Chris Walton from C. Walton Design. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover a really quick topic covering using you know, library object options, which I feel like uh, from some of the comments, a lot of people are missing or don't understand are there, or maybe at least give a little tour of what some of Lumion's included objects have as options that you may not know about. So, <clears throat> Every object, Lumion's interface has changed ever so slightly over the years. Um, so for people who are new, this might come as a surprise that a lot, of, a lot of Lumion's objects come with some pretty cool options. They're not just stuck as the way they are. And the easiest case would be working with Lumion's trees. So sometimes this show more properties that's showing up here is not turned on and so maybe you're not used to this seeing these the, the the properties we have here but pretty much every tree I can think of on here object has these similar type of properties I think that's the way they're designed and so if you didn't know about them well you're learning to learn about them now trees can have their colors adjusted in a hue it kind of goes lost along kind of the rainbow colors here saturation affects the the, this new color here and in this color range um, so it this this plant is default bluish green and then that will make it ridiculous like purple and then this is kind of a blend of the two if you wanted so and you can make them semi-transparent it looks better when it actually renders depending on the quality setting you're at so these are options that show up for plants and if you guys didn't know about that then now you do and I'm glad you do now so that's pretty much the same across the board for these objects so it's always nice because you can have a specific tree but I want to make it you know adjust it a little a little bit just to be able to get maybe more of a fall color which it's it's hard it's it's not perfect there we go we got a red tree now so options within these tree plants, these tree objects. Now here's a big one too. Going, moving on to cars or automotive. This whole section here. A lot of people have asked me on my on comments on my traffic roundabout animation, like how did you turn the lights on the cars? And I keep thinking that they thought I added a light, added lights to the cars, like actual. Lumion lights tied to the cars to go around but then I think I realized that they don't understand that cars have a light option here so if you don't see it again show more uh, properties Lumion randomly generates colors for cars we're getting a lot of grays here but yeah there you go <laughs> but as we add cars Every one of these cars has it set up to have lights turned on. It's just kind of emissiveness slider. Not, it's not projecting beams or anything, and the tail lights light up too. That's that's how we get that effect. And if you have a reflective surface, it'll reflect off the bottom. And so again, it is selected here. You can change the color of the vehicle. If you didn't like whatever Lumion randomly generated. <clears throat> we can have varying degrees of light here, and now we can have driver on or off. So we got a shadow figure in there, on or off. Looks like a couple of them. So, pretty much everyone I know of supports this, this kind of, these options. And so now if you didn't know how to turn car lights on cars, now you do. And you can have the driver on or off. You could also make the whole thing glow. It's kind of a... It shouldn't be like that anymore. I held control and did that. So, moving on. Just, just a quick kind of tour of a lot of these objects. Ones that I could think of, and there's probably going to be more I'm going to miss. You know, going to these effects. Some fountains are pretty much fixed, except for color tinting. A lot of things have color tinting to them. For some reason, you can make it glow. And then some of these other fountains are actually more controllable. <clears throat> Randomize, emitter length. 
So plenty of pretty cool options built into there. Fires, similar. You guys get the idea. All of them are going to have their... These, these particle effects especially are being generated. They're going to have specific slider adjustments. And maybe you didn't know that. And so now you do. <laughs> yes. Leaves. The leaves are awesome. You can really have them. <clears throat> this is how you get leaves going in the wind. But that looks insane. Like... That isn't, I mean, this, <laughs> this is a hurricane or something, and it's just ripped off all the leaves. You can, of course, remove, change the amount. So there's just a couple here. You can change their color. The green, a type. I like playing with this one, their size. And, of course, you adjust, it, controlling these two, X and Y, you control, or sorry, X and Z, you can control what direction they're going. So... Very useful sliders there. This should be good for these. These are similar. These all work kind of similar ways. They have specific options. Um, pretty interesting. Most objects in here don't have settings besides some colorization, which is important. And this one does not have anything. Some don't, some do. Here we go. Here's one where you could actually change the bed sheet co colors. You could also. Make them glow. I think it's just kind of an old default thing that's been in there. But something really cool that maybe a lot of people don't know about. If I could find them, I think it's actually under outdoor. If you guys didn't know this, this is pretty cool. The uh, flags here. So, got a Great Britain flag. But you can change the image of the flag. This is a test rendering. You can change it to whatever. It's like Lumion isn't, it may look like it's limited onto whatever these main countries' flags are, but essentially you can have any flag, anything you want, hanging on there. And then most of these are kind of you know long rectangles. There is also the Swiss flag, which is more square. So you can have a more squared uh, image on here. That's actually really cool. I don't, I don't utilize that near enough. I even made one with like it had transparency. I think it made it look like it was ripped. I think I did that. And it will default back to there. So those are pretty cool options in here. Um, most of these are pretty generic just color-wise. It's always good taking a look at what, uh, what things might have options. I don't see anything really useful in here. And then people... When it comes to people, this is pretty important. Now we can have you know, these white out people or the black out people in kind of very, not really varying degrees much anymore. These can get a little extra white, a little too glowy. So if you want all the shadow people, very useful. That's how you work with that. Oh, that'd be cool if you could have a slider that changes like hair color, eye color, or skin tone, or something, have a little more variety, or shirt color. But for now, um, we can make them shadow people or not. I'm pretty sure these are all pretty straightforward as well. So these ones, these silhouette people can be transparent. Oh, this isn't a person, sorry. These 3D silhouettes also have a uh, some adjustments to be able to turn a shadow on or off. If they're transparent or not. I guess if they're bright. So they could be any color you want. You know, I don't even know if I knew this, to be honest. I This might be something that was newer. But they're not animated. They're just frozen. But there's some in important options there as well. Um, sound, which I have yet to probably ever use. Not that I, you shouldn't, but you have the volume and a distance. So, a lot of objects have, have settings. And if some people apparently don't, uh, from what it sounds like, weren't aware of that. So I want to make sure you guys can see. Um, I wish that, I think there is a TV that lets you add an image to it. I might be wrong.
I thought there was something like that. But I might be I might be mixing it up. Well, actually I don't Ah, that'd be cool, but some are limited, some need to shed a little more. But there are a couple ones in here that do have some nifty little settings in here. Well That's okay. We can do, now we can talk about lights. We have some important color sliders here, brightness, the cone size. Hopefully you guys have seen this. It'll turn off the light source on or off, makes a little cup thing in case you want to get that in the camera. This is how you randomize them at night. Either on all at once or randomized as the sun sets in a, in a scene. And these are uh, shadow settings and awesome target settings. So I hope you guys, hope you, I was able to show you guys a little bit more options you may have with your default uh, library. And, and uh, if you have any questions, try it out. And until next time, guys.